Hello and welcome back. So you've just downloaded Blender 2.83. Maybe you've never used Blender before, maybe you used 2.82, maybe you even remember 2.79. Regardless of your experience, here are a few things which I think you should set up as soon as you download the newest version. You'll start with this splash screen, with a beautiful demonstration of what Blender can do courtesy of Ian Hubert, and you'll have a few options that you can choose. If you remember 2.79, you might want to use right click to select, but I think it's worth trying to get used to left click because most of the programs use it. The spacebar function is up to you, although I find it depends on what kind of keyboard you're using as to which makes the most sense. If you use a full PC keyboard, then it makes less difference which one you choose, but if you're using a laptop with a function key, make sure you choose the function you most often use for the spacebar, or you'll have to press the function key every time you want to use it. The theme is completely down to personal preference. When you click save, you'll get the second splash screen. This one will open every time you start Blender, unless you turn it off in settings, but I find it really useful because I use Blender for different things. It lets you quickly start up a new project with different layouts for different things, like 2D animation, VFX and video editing. Of course, you can set all these up manually, but I find it just speeds up getting into a new project. Choose anyone you like, but for this video I'll show you how to set up the general file. Starting off with, we want to change a bunch of the render settings, which are over here in the Render tab. Blender has two different render engines, Cycles and EV. Cycles is generally more accurate but takes longer, and EV, which is generally less accurate but considered a real-time engine. By default it's set to EV, but you can change it by clicking here and choosing whichever you want. There is a third option, Workbench, but that just makes a render of the standard viewport but without the grid lines. So first of all, the EV settings. The samples you can leave at the default for most purposes. And then for the settings below, to get the most accurate results, tick Ambient Occlusion, which will add slight shadows to all internal edges. Bloom gives a slight glow effect to lights. Screen space reflections allows light bounces off reflective surfaces. And then also check refraction, which will allow lights to travel through transparent surfaces. I usually uncheck half res trace, which makes it all a bit more accurate, but it does make it slightly slower. Motion blur depends on your scene. It's always more accurate to have it on, but in EV it still only currently works for moving the camera, not moving any objects. High quality normals will increase accuracy, but make it slower to render. Under shadows, high bit depth will reduce banding at the cost of speed, and soft shadows should be left on to smooth any banding that does happen. Indirect lighting should be baked, but only after you've set up your scene and included a probe like an irradiance volume. And now for the cycle settings. Just scroll up and change the render engine to cycles to see all these. The samples are much more important for cycles, so you'll need to increase them based on your scene to reduce noise. However, the most exciting thing in my opinion that Blender 2.83 adds that 2.82 didn't have is adaptive sampling. This will give you more samples where they're needed to reduce noise, and less where they aren't needed for brighter smooth surfaces for example. This will make your renders way faster and less noisy, so I'd always leave this checked. Under light paths, you can uncheck reflective and refractive caustics if you rather use transparent materials and want a little speed boost but leave them checked if you want these nice glass refractions. The only performance setting I would change is the tile size, and this depends massively on whether you're using a CPU or GPU. Instead of guessing or using a table like this, which is quite old and inaccurate for a lot of cases, I use the add-on auto tile size. Make sure you have GPU enabled in preferences if you've got one, and then turn on auto tile size, and you'll see it choose the fastest tile size for you automatically. Under color management, you can choose high contrast if you want it to look a bit less washed out, but if you want to edit your render in another editor, like Lightroom, it's much better to leave it as none. Now for the output settings. The resolution is completely up to you. A higher resolution will look nicer, but it will also take longer, and bear in mind most monitors won't even be able to display higher than the default 1920 by 1080 Render region is really handy, as it allows you to press Ctrl B when in render view to only render a small section, which will make it a lot faster. Crop to render region will make that selection affect final renders as well as just the viewport. The output location is up to you as well, but I'd always change it from the default temporary file because this is really hard to find way down in program files. In layers, you might be tempted to turn on denoising, but even though there have been lots of improvements to the built-in denoiser, it still isn't very good in terms of making artifacts, so I'd choose a free add-on like denoise which you can get for free from Remington Creative. Now there are a few preferences which you should change to make sure Blender is using your computer resources as effectively as possible. To open Preferences, just go to Edit and then Preferences, and then go to System. Select CUDA. This will allow you to use your CPU and GPU if you have one, so select both. 
Now there are a few add-ons which I recommend having enabled, but this is just personal choice and depends on what you usually use Blender for. Add Mesh and Curve Extra Objects gives you a few more primitives, so it allows you to start off modelling quicker. Images as Planes is pretty handy for stuff like background trees with transparency. Loop Tools is really useful for adding some extra functions in edit mode. Now there are loads of settings you can change other than the ones I've shown you, but what I've shown you should set you up pretty well to start doing your own thing in Blender. And once you're ready, go to File and then Save Startup File, which will save all your settings for every time you open Blender. If you want to get rid of them, just load factory settings. Hopefully this video has helped you off starting in Blender 2.83. If you've liked it, please consider sharing it with anyone else you think might find it useful. Thanks for watching.